Conversation for lesson one. I saw the white cliffs of Dover from the boat deck. What did they look like? Wonderful. You can see them clearly. You should go and see them yourself. All cliffs are the same everywhere. I think I'll go down and fetch the suitcases from the cabin before the ship arrives. Oh, darling, life isn't just business and organising things. This is our first visit to England. We must see everything we can. I expect the fog will prevent us from seeing anything. Oh, don't be silly. Fog doesn't cover England the whole time, as some people think. Anyway, I feel like a drink. I'm going to the bar. But you can have a drink at any time. Have one before dinner when we get to London. But I feel like one now. When do we arrive? In about half an hour. Oh, all right. I'll see the cliffs. But look at the crowd on the boat deck. Why on earth are they standing there? They're queuing. Queuing? What for? Get off the ship. But you said there was still half an hour. Yes, but the English love forming queues. Apparently, it's one of their national characteristics. Extraordinary. Well, I can't get through all those people, so I shan't be able to see the White Cliffs. We'll have a drink in the bar, and then I'll go down and fetch the suitcases. Conversation for lesson two. Would you mind telling me the purpose of your visit to England? I'm here on business. Not only business, Harry. We've also crossed the channel to see Peter, our son. We want to see England, too. We've heard so much about it. Uh, and yes, then... madam. May I see your passports? Of course. I suppose you want to check them and stamp them. Uh, yes, thank you. How long are you staying in England, Mr. Salis? I don't know exactly. Till I finish my business. I see. And how much money have you with you? Money? Yes. How much in foreign currency? Is your money in cash or traveller's checks? <sighs> Why all these questions? You no, know, I've travelled all over the world. Up the Rhine, across the Pyrenees, to the United States, over the Pacific. And everywhere you officials ask the same questions. It's exasperating. I don't think you understand, sir. We have to make sure you have enough money to last you during your stay. But why? I thought pression was the great virtue of the English. Why can't we come and go as we wish? You can, but there are so many people in this country already that we must keep some control. I'm surprised you don't want to know how many gold teeth I have. He can see without asking, darling. Conversation for lesson three. Is this all your luggage, sir? Yes, four bags. Have you anything to declare? Any presents for people in this country? Have you got any spirits or tobacco? No, but I've brought my invention. I only completed it a couple of months ago. Uh, your invention, sir? Yes, I've come to England to sell it. I've been working on it a long time, and now I hope it'll bring me the reward I deserve. What is it? Uh, may I have a look, please? Here it is, in this box. There you are. But it's just an envelope. That's right. But look what's inside the envelope. It's an inflatable umbrella. Inflatable umbrella? That's right. You just press this button and it opens over your head. <laughs> it looks like a great rubber mushroom. That's right. Isn't it wonderful? And it all fits into one small envelope. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave the umbrella with us for the moment, sir. But why? When have it back? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that now, sir. Really, this is most inconvenient. I understand that I regret the inconvenience, but there's nothing I can do about it. We'll let you know our decision as soon as possible. Oh, no. I've only been in England for 20 minutes, and I've already had two arguments. You can't take my brother away. I'm very sorry, sir, but I've just done so. You confiscated my most precious possession. Frankly, it makes me furious. <laughs> Conversation for lesson four. Have you seen my
my handbag anywhere. There it is. You're almost sitting on it. Oh, thank you. You know, there was so much fuss about the umbrella that I forgot to declare the presents I bought for Peter. That's nothing to be so pleased about. What are you smiling at? Oh, the whole scene was really funny. I don't like that sort of comedy very much. Customs officers aren't the kind of people I like chatting with. I thought our man was very polite. I wonder why he took your umbrella away. But I'm sure he'll return it. He gave you the receipt, didn't he? Yes, he gave it to me, but... Oh, my hat box. Oh, what a fright he gave me. It's fallen off the luggage rack. You're lucky it just missed that gentleman opposite. I'm very sorry. He doesn't answer. How strange these English are. The hat box gave me such a scare. But look, that man just goes on reading his newspaper. The English are always phlegmatic, and they never speak in trains. Yes, but he didn't turn a hair. Speak to him again. You speak to him. All right. Excuse me, sir. Have you a light? You see? He does not. How English. Excuse me, sir. Eh? What? Speaker, please. I can't hear you. Oh, dear. It isn't just because he's English, darling. He's deaf. Conversation for Lesson 5. <laughs> Peter, how wonderful to see you. Oh, what a journey we've had. But being with you a few days will compensate for everything. Thank goodness I arrived in time to meet you. I laid in the tube. I said to myself, I will get there on time. I must get there. And somehow I did. Well, what are we going to do now? First, I must introduce a great friend of mine to you. Pamela, my parents. Pamela will help to show you round London. How do you do? How do you How do? How do you do? It's Pamela's birthday. Oh, many oh, happy, returns, many happy of the day. returns of the day. There really are a lot of things to celebrate. But first, shall we go to the hotel? Porter, will you call a taxi, please? Are you tired after the journey? Yes, exhausted. Well, darling, if you will have arguments wherever you go... Arguments? My husband had an argument with a customs officer. Well, I'll you in London, Father. You won't get into any trouble while I'm with you. We're going to have the time of our lives. Father will sell his invention, and Mother will spend the profits in the shops. We'll see all the sights and all the theatres and restaurants. What can Victoria Station? What a busy place it is. Everyone seems to be rushing about, ignore everyone else. London's like that. You feel very small here at first, and then you start about yourself, and you grow bigger and bigger, and the city grows smaller and smaller. Peter, you talk of London as if it were a big balloon. Or an inflatable umbrella. Conversation for Lesson 6. Oh, darling, I don't confuse things easily. Oh, well, you do from time to time. Have you a room reserved for Salus, please? A moment, please, sir. Oh, I do hope it's the room I wanted. They have a double room which overlooks the park. That's what I asked for. It's the best room they have. Salus, did you say, sir? I'm afraid we have no room reserved for Mr. Salus here. But didn't you get the letter I wrote? I'm sorry, madam, we didn't. But I posted it at least a week ago. If we'd received it, you would have had a reply. We always answer letters turn. Are you sure you posted the letter, Mother? Of course I am. I remember sticking the stamps on and sealing it. Well, we don't argue. Have you any other rooms vacant? Let me see. There's the one by the on the second floor, number 260. I think it was still free this afternoon. Oh, good. No, number 160 is taken. I'm afraid we're full at this time of the year, sir. You could fill a couple of trains with tourists and baggage that have arrived only today. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? Well, if we can help in any other way, the Gloucester Hotel is the always... Gloucester? Did you say Gloucester? What's the matter? I've suddenly remembered. What? What is it? There was the Gloucester Hotel and the Leicester Hotel on the other side of the square. Which you write to? Well, I must confess, I think it was the Leicester Darling, you really are hopeless. I'm sorry. These names are so strange and they're pronounced quite different the way they're spelled. How can I help confusing them? You must learn them, darling. 
that's all. Conversation for Lesson 7. Well, it's certainly been a wonderful day. I always enjoy myself when lots of things happen. Everything easy now with Peter and Pamela here. They're certainly putting themselves out for us. And it's so good that Peter's really himself again. He was so tired before he left for England. Yes, he certainly looks well now. Pamela's a sweet girl. A little quiet, perhaps. But she seems reliable and very sure of herself. She's a real beauty, too. With that wonderful cream complexion and those soft dark eyes and that fair hair. She's got a good figure, yes, too. Yes, Harry, you talk as if I hadn't seen her myself. No. Well, she's a pretty girl. I wonder. What? Have you asked yourself... Oh, I know, whether Peter's in love with her. Yes, well, between ourselves, I'm not sure that I want Peter to marry an English girl. Why not? Well, there's the difference in outlook. Marriage is difficult enough as it is. It's a question of whether they could support themselves and of where they would live. Peter might decide to settle in England. We'd never see him. Yes, but Barbara... We don't know what Pamela's parents are like. And the wedding will have to take place in England. Most of our friends won't be able to come. And if Peter decides to stay here, he may become naturalised. And then our grandchildren will be a different nationality from us. Yes, but... It depresses me to think of our son involving himself in this way. But, Barbara, are you crazy? You don't even know they're engaged. Conversation for Lesson 8. These newspaper headlines are difficult to understand. Listen, what does this one mean? Broke. Stole frozen food. It means the man was broke. He had no money. So he stole some frozen food. Food that is frozen to keep it fresh. Oh, I see. But listen to this. Stung by defeat. Obviously stung by his defeat yesterday, Smithers swung and struck great determination and finally won this afternoon. Oh, Smithers is a golfer. It means that, stung or annoyed by his recent defeat, he swung his club and struck the ball in a very determined way this afternoon and won the game. <laughs> You're certainly clever at headlines, Peter. What newspaper are you reading? I've chosen The Guardian this morning. After reading some of the newspapers Mother's got there, I swore I'd never do so again. Oh, don't exaggerate. They're not as bad as that. But listen to this. What on earth does it mean? Twenty and never been kissed. It means that the girl is twenty years old and that she's never been kissed. What a ridiculous news item. I agree with Peter. Some newspapers really are trivial. Full of gossip, divorce and crime. All the same, you've certainly been buried in them for the last quarter of an hour. That isn't true. The only good thing that you can say about these newspapers is that the print and the pictures are excellent. Listen, here's a sensational report about a man who stole his brother's false teeth. <laughs> See? It does interest you. No, but many English papers are excellent. If you read The Times or The Guardian or... I think we should break up this discussion. Yes. What are we going to do this morning? You spoke of going to see someone, Mr. Salis. Yes, I think I'll phone this business friend of mine. Would you like to see some of the shops with me, Mrs. Salis? Oh, that's very kind of you. Um, could we go to the one where you bought that lovely dress you're wearing? I like the one you wore yesterday, too. All right. After reading those newspapers, I feel that everyone we meet will either be divorced or wearing someone else's false teeth. <laughs> you ought to read some different newspapers tomorrow. <laughs> Conversation for Lesson 9. Look at this material. Isn't it beautiful? It would make wonderful curtains. I can just see them in the drawing room at home. It's quite cheap, too. Only 50 pence a yard. This is attractive, too. It would make very good cushions to put on our sofa. I've got a yellow cover on my bed in my flat here in London. It's very gay. I love decorating and furnishing rooms. I do, too. 
I decorated the dining room in my parents' house at Puddleton. What's Puddleton? It's a tiny village. I was at school there. But as I was saying, a friend sold me a painting of his which I put over the fireplace. Then above the table I hung a lamp with a parchment shade. It sounds beautiful. Oh, do look at this velvet. How much is it? It's more expensive. A guinea a yard. A guinea? What on earth's that? <laughs> it's one pound and five pence. What we used to call 21 shillings. Oh, you're laughing at me. Don't tell me that in addition to having 12 pennies in a shilling and 20 shillings in a pound, you also had 21 shillings in a guinea. Yes, but you see, there hasn't been a guinea coin for a long time now. The word is only used to show prices in shops. Shopkeepers like it. It makes their goods seem cheaper. 20 guineas looks very much like 20 pounds, but it's really 21. As we're talking of buying things, Pamela, I'd like to get you a present. You're being so kind, and it was your birthday yesterday. Oh, no. Why should you? Choose something yourself. It's more practical that way. Anything up to two pence. Two pence? Oh, no. What am I saying? Two pounds, I mean. I'm sorry. Your English money makes me feel quite helpless. <laughs> Conversation for Lesson 10. Now, what do I do? You lift the receiver and dial. Then, when you hear the pips, the pay tone, you insert the money. I see. Let me try. I hope the man's there. He should be. My friend said he would certainly be in London now. Oh, there's the pay tone. Insert the coin. It won't go in. You're trying to get it into the wrong slot. Oh, dear. That better. But now the line's gone dead. They probably tired and rang off. Oh, it's so confusing. Would you do it, Peter? I think you should try again yourself. Then you'll learn. Well, uh... Try once more. I said I would help you, and I will, but... Uh... Yes, all right. I should learn how to do it. I remember my grandmother was so nervous. She would never use a telephone. She was frightened of it. I don't want to think I feel the same about English telephones. Hello, can I help you? Ah, I'm through. Hello? Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. MacAndrew. Well done. He's there. The girl told me to hold on a minute. Oh, what's happened? There's that purring noise. We seem to be cut off again. Yes, Father, of course you are. You put your arm down on the receiver rest. I'll get through for you. Like most successful businessmen, Father, you're helpless without a secretary. <laughs> Conversation for Lesson 11. Did you have a successful morning? Yes, indeed. We managed to ring up Mr. McAndrew after a lot of difficulties. I would have given it up, but Peter helped me. He told me what to do. Which was a little different from what you did. Perhaps. Anyway, everything settled. Mr. McAndrew knew who I was at once. He must have been expecting my phone call. I just had to suggest a time for our meeting. It all sounds very hopeful. And what did you ladies do this morning? We went to hundreds of shops. I'd have liked to buy almost everything, but I only bought a pair of shoes, some beautiful material, a couple of ashtrays, a skirt, a woolen jumper. Only? You ought to have bought a few diamond bracelets as well. One would think I was a millionaire. Well, in a week, you'll really be wealthy, as you'll have sold your inflatable umbrella. Perhaps, but now I'm poor. You should have remembered that this morning, sweetheart. Well, what are we going to have to eat? I should like something really English. Are there any special English dishes on the menu? There's roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, or steak and kidney pie. And cottage pie. It's made of mashed potatoes and mincemeat. I thought food and cooking were generally bad in England. Not if you know where to go. I've always eaten very well here. 
And before you complain about English food today, I'd better tell you a secret. What? What? The cooks in this restaurant are all foreigners. <laughs> Conversation for Lesson 12. Oh, take your elbow off my shoulder, Harry. Hmm? I'm not an instrument for supporting your camera. I'm sorry. It steadies me while I'm taking the picture. I can't even look at Westminster Abbey in peace. You talk as if you wanted me to go away from here altogether. No, I shouldn't like you to miss Westminster Abbey. What a pity we can't get onto the roof. The view would be wonderful. Let's go into the Abbey. And look at the inside. Did you know that most of the kings and queens of England have been crowned inside this building? Many of them have also been buried here. Come on, let's go in. Oh. It seems so dark after the sunlight outside the abbey. So it should be. I can just imagine the dead kings and queens being carried out of the sunlight into the darkness of their final resting place. Very poetic. Barbara has poetry in her soul. Oh, of course. This is where many of England's greatest poets are also buried. That's right, in Poets' Corner. Can we see Byron's tomb? No, I don't think Byron is buried here. Queen Victoria thought he was too immoral to be buried in the Abbey. Surely many kings were more immoral than Byron. Ah, but they were royal. I think the British make too much fuss about royalty. I am a confirmed Republican. I'm not. I like colour and tradition and spectacle. Yes, but it costs so much. Not much more than a president. And here it's an old tradition. Besides, think of all the people from other countries who only come here to see the royal events and the guards at Buckingham Palace. Oh dear, I seem to have put my foot in it. Conversation for Lesson 14. Reflections of the lights in the river. You seldom see them as clearly as this. Yes, this view is usually very impressive at dusk. Look at the way the buses turn into rows of lights. It would be interesting to stand here at dawn. Yes, we should come here one morning at sunrise. Of course, we'd have to get up before five. Yes, but it would almost be worth it. I do enjoy being here with you in the sunset. It is pleasant. I wouldn't want to be with anyone else. Oh, look at that big ship coming up the river. Do you feel the same? I wonder what kind of ship it is. Pamela, you mean a lot to me. But oh, look, it's stopping. It isn't. It's just going slowly. No, I'm sure it stopped. Oh, what does it matter? Pamela, don't you realise you're just the sweetest girl I've ever met? Oh, Pity, you're quite right. It's still moving. I'm sorry. What did you say? Conversation for Lesson 15. Oh dear, I wish we'd taken the lift. If I'd known it was so far up, I wouldn't have suggested walking. Oh. Good morning, can I help you? I have an appointment with Mr. McAndrew at 11. What is your name, please? Uh, Salas. 
Are you sure it was at 11 o'clock, sir? In my diary, it's 11.30. I thought we'd agreed on 11. Uh, however, it doesn't matter. Well, I'll ask Mr. McAndrew if he can see you a little earlier. Would you go through the first door on the right, please? Do make yourself at home. Thank you. I was sure Mr. McAndrew had agreed to see me at 11. What an extraordinary room. Look at all those portraits on the wall. Extraordinary, I agree with you. Who do you think they are? Old directors of the firm, I suppose. They all look so severe. I'd expected something unusual, but... <laughs> look at their black umbrellas, folded neatly by their sides. They all seem to be staring at us. And now you're going to challenge all this with your new invention. Well, that's my intention. But frankly, this place frightens me. Looking at all those old gentlemen on the wall, I feel I'm just a poor foreigner with a crazy idea, butting his head against a wall of old-fashioned umbrellas. Conversation for Lesson 16. The advantage of this umbrella is that you can keep it in your pocket. Then, when it rains, you just take it out, press a button, and there you have as good an umbrella as you can find anywhere. Anywhere? I'm sure it's impossible to improve our umbrellas, Mr. Sellers. Perhaps. But I wish you could watch me giving a demonstration. I merely think you could manufacture a different kind of umbrella. A different kind of umbrella? It would increase sales enormously. But let me tell you, Mr. Sallis, our umbrellas are the result of centuries of research. Of course. But an inflatable umbrella can be carried about so easily. Mr. Sallis, I think you forget that our umbrella is a mark of respectability, the sign of a gentleman. Even royalty use it. Can you really see an Englishman carrying a kind of balloon through the streets? <laughs> I think we're talking at cross-purposes. For I... centuries, Mr. Sallis, our clients have put up their umbrellas unaided. But they might get used to inflating them. Inflating them, Mr. Sallis? This, Mr. McAndrew, is a question of a practical invention, not just of tradition. Really, Mr. Sallis, it seems I can't make you understand. Thank you for coming, but I'm really very busy. Conversation for Lesson 17. Harry does seem depressed. He should be proud of himself. He dared to propose a new idea. Most people don't propose anything new. They're afraid to. I'm sure he'll succeed next time. Oh, here he is. Hello, Harry. Cheer up. I'm sure other opportunities will occur. I dare say. But I've got to find them. Oh, you will? Anyway, we've got some good news. Have you? What? Pavel and I are going to get married. I dare you to feel depressed after that. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. You don't seem very pleased, Mother. Of course I am. But have Pamela's parents been told? Not yet. They know Peter, of course. We thought of going to see them this weekend. Yes, we thought we could all visit them. I dare say it'll be all right. Pamela thinks so. We can telephone them this evening. You young people really are independent these days. Don't worry. I know my parents will be delighted. They're retired and they love visitors. We can all drive down tomorrow or the day after. You'll see. We'll have a wonderful time. This will cheer you up, Father. And perhaps you'll meet someone who can help you. Conversation for Lesson 18. Have you tipped the maid, Harry? Need I? Isn't tipping included in the bill? Yes, but she was very helpful. She was, but one has to be sensible. As there's a service charge here, we needn't give anything more. Otherwise, we'll end up paying about 50% extra. But I like giving when I want to. Then you should stay at hotels where you don't need to tip. All right. Have you asked the head porter for the hotel stickers? Yes, I told him that we needed at least 20 for all your luggage. Oh, that's good. And did you leave the forwarding address? Yes, sweetheart. I've done everything. And you? Have you forgotten anything? Of course not. Mr. Sallis! Mr. Sallis! He's here. Harry, you're being called. 
You needn't tell me. I can hear. Mr. Salas? Yes, what is it? That's a parcel, you hear, sir. It's just arrived as you're leaving. Barbara! It's my inflatable umbrella. The customs have sent it back. Wonderful. I apologize. Apparently a gang was trying to smuggle through drugs hidden in umbrellas. And they suspected me. No. Well, anyway, I've got it back. Here you are. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Well, that was a good tip. Service is included, you know. <laughs> yes, you're right. But who cares? Of course, I needn't have given him anything. But this calls for a celebration. Conversation for Lesson 19. is over 20 years old. It's a 1938 model. If it goes all right, we'll be in Salisbury before midday. Then we should reach your parents' house by five o'clock. That means we'll have been travelling for about seven hours. I think it's amazing that we can make such a long journey in such an old car. Last Saturday, I drove 80 miles in three hours. An average speed of just under 30 miles an hour. In England, you know, people are much fonder of old cars than in other countries. Of course, there's a road test now for old cars, but this car passed the road test. Hmm. Isn't the steering wheel a little loose? No. No, the steering's all right. The only disadvantage is that the gears are a little stiff, and the accelerator sometimes sticks. But one gets used to it. What was that? What was that? Oh, just the exhaust. Don't worry. I hope you're comfortable there at the back. The springs are good for such an old car, aren't they? <laughs> Very good for such an old car. <laughs> oh, dear, these noises are a little sudden, aren't they? What's that knocking in the engine? <laughs> oh, it does that from time to time. But it's nothing serious. I'm sure it isn't good for the engine. Oh, the car's stopping. Did you do that on purpose, Pamela? Not exactly. I think something's gone wrong. Oh, don't worry. Peter's an excellent mechanic, aren't you, darling? I didn't know you were a mechanic, Peter. No, neither did I. Conversation for Lesson 20. It's very good of you to invite us in like this. Well, it's not pleasant to have a breakdown miles from anywhere. These cars, I'd rather ride a horse, even up to London. Horses are more reliable than cars any day. Do you really think so? But surely with a big farm like this, don't you have a car? Darling, he's not serious. I'm sure he only means that horses are much pleasanter. Of course, we've got tractors and a couple of lorries, but I enjoyed working with horses more. Times have changed. But everything's going well, isn't it? Oh, yes, although I don't think the harvest will be particularly good. Ah, but you farmers always say that. And then you have a really bumper crop. What do you grow? Wheat and barley, oats, a lot of vegetables too. Carrots, cabbages and peas, and then... Uh... Do have some tea. Uh, there's bread and honey if you'd like some. And biscuits. Please help yourselves. You really are most kind. Thank you. I've got a friend who's a farmer, but he keeps mainly livestock. Cows, sheep and pigs. He sells tons of beef and mutton, lamb and pork too. Of course, in England we import a lot of our meat, but here we keep hens and turkeys for Christmas time. It sounds as if Peter started the car. I'm sure Pamela will be arrested by the police one of these days with that old car. Perhaps horses are better. Well, thank you very much. We've got to go now. I'm just finishing my tea. Perhaps we'll have another breakdown soon and meet some more pleasant people. Conversation for Lesson 21.
Where have Peter and Pamela gone? I think they've just gone in to find Mr. and Mrs. Hardcastle. Isn't this a lovely garden? I feel tired out, but one look at that makes up for that long, uncomfortable drive. I don't know the names of half these flowers. Of course, that's a rose, and I know these are daisies on the lawn. Otherwise, I'd give up. Those are water lilies on the pond. Can't make out what those are, though, with the blue petals and long stalks. I don't know. There seem to be about three or four different varieties of each flower. You know, we should save up a lot of money and buy a house with a really beautiful garden with fruit trees and rare plants. You'd have to work hard, though, to keep it up. Goodness! Look at that flower. Over there, to the left of the path. It's beautiful. I'd love to pick it. I don't think you should. No one will see. There. I've done it. Here they are. Dear. Mr. and Mrs. Salis, this is my father. How do you do? Uh, How do you do? I'm terribly sorry. I've just picked one of your flowers. Oh, that's all right. There's no danger. You may be the beauty, Mrs. Salis, but I'm not the beast. Come into the house. Conversation for Lesson 22. Yes, that's right. I practiced as a solicitor and then retired. Was it an interesting job? Well, uh, more of a profession than a job. Yes, I enjoyed it. Of course, I was working in an office, but I certainly met a lot of interesting people, often in the strangest circumstances. Did you often appear in the criminal court? Uh, Sometimes, but in England, that's more the work of a barrister. And you write novels, Mrs. Harcastle? Oh, well, I, I have published two. And a detective story. Uh, you were just finishing a short story when the Salises arrived, weren't you, dear? No, I was just beginning one. A tragedy with a very complicated plot. But you often write very comic stories. I always say your best novel is The Policeman Was Smoking on Sunday. A real comedy. Oh, I don't agree. Are your characters based on people you've met? Yes, most of them. (laughs) Oh, dear. Perhaps we'll find ourselves in print in a year or two. Well, if you do, you needn't worry. I was going to say earlier that my only real contribution to my wife's novels is knowing the law of libel. Rather a negative contribution, I'm afraid, but useful. Conversation for Lesson 23. Well, now, I wonder if there's anything special you'd like to do. No, it's bliss just relaxing like this, and the sun's actually shining. Tomorrow we'll be going to the village fair. I hope you'll come. Later on, I thought we might drive down to the sea. But this morning, we can laze around, if you like. Yes, this time next week, we'll probably be rushing round London again, trying to interest people in inflatable umbrellas. So we'd better get all the leisure we can. How long will you actually be staying? Oh, I don't think we can stay more than three or four days. Is that all? Well, you know the old Spanish proverb? A fish and a guest both smell after three days. Oh, nonsense. I do hope you'll stay a little longer. Before you go, I want to put you in touch with a friend who can certainly help you with your inflatable umbrella. He's away at present, isn't he, darling? Yes, but as soon as he comes back, I'll give him a ring. I'd love to see him when he arrives. Thank you. But please, darling, don't start building castles in the air until you know he can do something. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed again. Oh, I won't feel disappointed this time. Now that I've got my inflatable umbrella with me, I feel completely confident. Yes, but I... am so sure now that my invention is sensible and useful that I just feel anyone who doesn't accept it is old-fashioned. Why, when one thinks of these absurd umbrellas that people still use, which have to be pushed up and down, which get in the way, which leave puddles on the floor... Oh, Harry, you're beginning to sound like a politician. No, I think he's quite right. 
In the crowded city, our traditional umbrellas really are clumsy and ridiculous. And to think that abroad they're supposed to be one of the symbols of life in England. Well said, my friend. You're my first English convert. I shall reward you in time with a beautiful silk umbrella, inflatable and printed with your name. Conversation for Lesson 25. Everyone's certainly making a fuss of that film star. Well, it's a great occasion here when someone well-known opens the fair. It does a lot of good. I wish that boy would stop making such a horrible noise with that whistle. It makes me so irritable. Oh, Harry, do stop grumbling. You've never been to an English country fair before. Now that you're here, you should make the most of it. Why don't you go and have your fortune told? I'm sure I can do without that. And I'm sure it won't do you any harm. Ask her about your prospects for the inflatable umbrella. Hello, have you been round the fair yet? I think so. We've been on the swings and I've won a doll. Harry's in a bad temper, though, because he made a fool of himself at the shooting gallery. He shot at one of the attendants by mistake. Good heavens. Was it serious? Oh, no. Luckily, he just shot a button off the man's sleeve. He got in the way. He didn't, darling. I tell you the fool... That'll do, Harry. Well, uh, anyway, I just saw that friend of mine who might help you with your invention. You must meet him. Where is he? He's coming back in half an hour. I think you'll find him useful. He does a lot of business with the umbrella manufacturers. Makes a lot of money, too. Meanwhile, why don't we visit the fortune teller? Do let's. All right, then. We'll see if she thinks I'm going to make a fortune. Conversation for Lesson 26. <laughs> see that you come from a distant country. Well, I've never pretended to speak English like an Englishman. Ah, but your hand, not your speech, told me that. I think you speak English perfectly. Well, uh, thank you. Now, let me see. Your hand shows that your childhood was not uh, always happy. No, that's certainly true. Indeed, you had moments of great unhappiness. Yes, I suppose I did. That's quite right. And many people made you do things against your will. Yes, you're certainly right there. My parents often stopped me doing things I liked. Yes, your past is very clear. But I want you... you to tell me about the future. Tell me, do you see anything in my hand about umbrellas? Umbrellas? Well, uh, let me see. Well, of course, I can see you using an umbrella quite a lot during your stay in England. But otherwise, they don't come into my life at all. Umbrellas. Hmm. It is difficult, of course, to see umbrellas in a palm. But what about success? Can I depend on it? Dare I take any risks? Ah, well, that's different. Oh, dear. Completely different? Well, uh, not exactly. But how exactly? Shall I have success without...